Good evening, everyone. Uh, my topic is on blockchain and other based electronic voting system, uh, dated November 7, 2020. So this has been submitted to International Conference on Electronics, Communication, and Aerospace Technology 2020. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Um, so the idea basically is I am trying to, uh, you know, uh, expand or extend the current electronic voting system and i'm going to link it to the blockchain kind of technology into it so these are the this is agenda and these are things what i'm going to discuss today so we'll start with the introduction of what is a blockchain what's an Aadhaar card i'll go ahead with uh, the introduction of Aadhaar card followed by the introduction on blockchain and the importance followed by the voting system that's been followed in india then uh, the related works, if any, that are there in our work, followed by the motivation uh, for doing such kind of work in this paper, followed by the work itself, and I conclude it with a scope on future, what it can hold further on. So first of all, uh, I'll start up with what's an Aadhaar project. We all know, uh, we all carry an Aadhaar card, uh, being an Indian citizen with ourselves. Uh, this was started way back in August 2010 uh, when the government of India uh, wanted an unique identification to people. Uh, they wanted to, to have a unique card so that they can link all the other cards and have a unique identification of people. So that was the idea of uh, Aadhaar project. And now, right now, more than 10 million people have enrolled themselves uh, in Aadhaar project. Okay. So what actually it does is uh, it's going to link the Aadhaar card that you carry with yourself would link your uh, uh, account it could be a bank account or whatever it is all those accounts and your mobile number with your pan whatever it is that's uh, into your other number okay that's what is happening uh, with your other card and its number okay so the main aim is as i said before like it it can uh, you know uh, reduce the fraud the duplicate identity of people and can avoid some kind of corruption how it does that we'll see in the further slides so with that further introduction let's go into what is an Aadhaar card basically so this slide will give an idea of what is an Aadhaar card if you can see in the left side of the screen uh, that is a typical Aadhaar card uh, with a photograph on the left and you have on the title you have government of India and everything uh, in the international language English and Hindi and on the right bottom you do have a QR code uh, scanning upon which you can get all the details that you carry uh, to the accounts links linked to the author okay and in the center you have uh, the identity of yourself your name your date of birth your gender it also has your address which is not mentioned in this particular image but as said address and everything okay so simple as that, Aadhaar card is going to have uh, centrally a number which is uh, a 12 digit number that is going to be unique for a citizen. Okay, So it has a 12 digit number with that uh, 12 digit number you can identify a person's identity nothing more than that. Okay, uh, And uh, who gave this Aadhaar card is it is not by the government of India but it is made for the government of India. It is given by UIDII. Okay? It is an authority which is called as a unique identification authority of india so Aadhaar card is given by uidai uh, for the government of india so who can add this other the third point is every indian citizen whatever your gender or age is you can have the Aadhaar card okay so any indian citizen if you are an indian citizen you, are, you can get an Aadhaar card okay whatever age you could be in whatever gender or sex you are in okay you get an Aadhaar card and the Aadhaar card is free of cost. You don't have to pay anything for the Aadhaar card. Uh, it's just free. You just have to go with your uh, uh, piece of identity, something like a ration or, uh, you know, uh, voter's ID or something like that. And you could have got your Aadhaar card and we all are carrying it right now in our pockets or in our uh, files. So uh, an Aadhaar card, as I said before, it gives, it links all your identities. So it gives free account to your, sorry, free access to your banking, telephone and other governmental facilities like you want to pay your uh, bills or something of that sort, you can have an Aadhaar card right in front of you to do those things, okay? The idea is to make a country fraud free or uh, free from corruption and to make sure 
an identity of an identifier is identified properly simple as that so that's with that uh, you know small introduction of other card i'll go into the uh, essence of this particular paper the blockchain so talking about blockchain uh, way back in 2008 if i could tell turn back the last decade we are all obsessed with uh, the cryptocurrencies especially the bitcoins and ethereum on all these kind of things uh, all these were made possible only through blockchain technology okay so what essentially is a blockchain it is nothing but an uncorrupted digital data ledger for transaction simple as that so uh, in in uh, in a general way you can uh, try to visualize a block of data i could say series of blocks of digital data which are linked together which mimics a linked list in a data structural organization and it cannot be corrupted why is it so because every block in a chain is going to be connected to a hash key so uh, you can't uh, you cannot try to access or meddle with the data unless you have the hash key so it's not possible to corrupt it so that's why we call it as uncorrupted uh, ledger since the every block is going to carry some digital data we can call it as a digital data ledger okay and secondly it is a distributed data system it's not a centralized one unlike other systems where there is a central authority which governs the all the you know uh, the updation and deletion of uh, any data this is a distributed data system so what you essentially have is you have the power of control with everyone and anyone okay so this is the second significance and thirdly we have similar data blocks across the network so every a stakeholder in a network is going to have carry the same data block and they can uh, you know have verification from time to time that's what i'm giving the fifth point consensus they can have the consensus of verification and time to time with other people to verify the authenticity of the block that they are trying to carry with themselves okay so with this idea of blockchain which is really uh, undeniable and uncorrupted uh, there is a motivation from our work that we can go into uh, employing blockchain for electoral system a small snapshot of how the voting system is being carried out in india now we are aware of this evm which is or otherwise called abbreviated as uh, electronic voting machine so uh, we know that in india election has been conducted by an autonomous uh, entity called as an india's electoral commission and uh, the image of this voting uh, you know uh, the voting system is shown in the left uh, side and uh, there are almost uh, almost a thousand million people who are voting in india with uh, almost 10000 polling booths roughly so it's a huge population as we are all aware of it and uh, it's very tough to conduct elections in a populous uh, democratic country like us so what it actually does is you can see there is a blue button on the right uh, which corresponds to a number and a symbol and a candidate's name if you are interested in a particular candidate you want to vote for him you can just click on that blue button and uh, red red color uh, you know led uh, pops up uh, lights up when you click into it and it's been recorded to the a uh, connected machine simple as that so that's how the voting system has been happening since the traditional form which was in a pen and a paper format not a pen and paper a stamp and a paper format that was uh, you know kind of uh, replaced by this evm machine and this evm machine has to be high time has to be replaced by some kind of blockchain based technology that is the main uh, uh, you know uh, objective of this particular paper and this is nothing but how uh, uh, votes are been collected or how it's been processed simple as that first we have an election announcement we are aware, aware of it then there will be nomination who have to nominate for which position maybe mp or mla or whatever it is and uh, if someone wants to withdraw they can withdraw from it that's withdrawal of candidates then there will be a campaigning where the particular candidate will try to you know camp for uh, some of promises that they will do when they are trying to win the elections there will be a polling stage which uh, we are trying to you know uh, go uh, with the election uh, will uh, the the population will go to vote and to choose their candidate and once the polling is over there will be a counting of uh, the uh, the candidates who is uh, getting uh, the winning and everything and uh, which will be shown in the result declaration thing okay so this is generally the how uh, an election happens in a particular country in our country to be exact so as i said the motivation first of all is we all know that lot of money has been wasted because of uh, 
uh, the voting process the voting election process itself takes eight to ten weeks that's roughly two to three months of time uh, so the time has been wasted during that time no government projects can happen so this is the biggest problem with the current uh, voting system that we are trying to have secondly the election process itself is hectic like it has to have a la larger work force lot of uh, people should be involved in working uh, the security people the police uh, force and uh, to some kind of you know military in uh, uh, secure places as well so it's 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 hectic in simple words and uh, it has to happen for different positions like mps and mlas and many more so uh, all these could contribute to the fact uh, that uh, the conduct conduction of ele election is not so easy and secondly thirdly uh, we used to have only a centralized database for votes like someone can you know kind of modify or censor the data or kind of uh, make some changes deliberate changes into the data which should not happen so but by using blockchain technology we can avoid that centralized kind of you know voting mechanism and obviously paper wastage you don't have to have any kind of paper wastage when you try to use an electronic or digital kind of voting and finally uh, we can avoid digital frauds like i said like uh, the government agencies could have some people of uh, uh, you know uh, at work who can meddle with the votes so this cannot happen when everyone is having everybody's information uh, using blockchain so our work it's simple as that we try to use our consensus of proof of work or proof of proof of stake simple as that which is uh, an inherent quality of blockchain uh, what it actually has is uh, all the votes can be uh, recorded as transactions okay and transaction can be populated in the form of blocks in a blockchain so what it's going to have it is going to have a record of uh, the vote balance and finally a blockchain could be developed from that and because there is a proper audit trail in a blockchain we cannot any alter any votes there okay so this is the general snapshot of the work here so benefits as i told the cost can be reduced as mentioned before and the percentage of people who can vote can be improved tremendously there are a lot of chances that people hate standing in queues uh, this can be reduced when you can have a mechanism where you can vote at home okay so this is first uh, motivation seriously and owing to a situation like this pandemic if it continues till the next election uh, we can have a remotest kind of uh, remote uh, voting technology that uh, av that avoids this problem okay and we can have a trust on governments governments can be trusted well when uh, they bring about a kind of uh, uh, a thing like this uh, we can and we can avoid fraud and bogus kind of votes which is very common illegal votes or fraud votes can be avoided by using this technology some of the benefits and finally since it's a distributed ledger and you need not to have any problem with uh, the authenticity of this particular election process uh, a snapshot which i mentioned before any voter can go into can log in into the system and when they enter an other number an otp will be generated to their mobile uh, they have to you know re-authenticate with their otp to get into the voting uh, portal and they can vote uh, to their personal or to their particular uh, you know uh, party political party and once they finish their vote they can log out and the vote can be registered with the government simple as that Using an other based verification, we can finish the whole election process here. Okay. So to, con to sum it all up, as I said, a distributed mechanism, which is really good, a tamper proof. And we can, we can, we have also recognized the technical drawbacks of uh, this blockchain as a service. What it is, is we'll show it in the next slide now. First things, there is something called as 51 percentage of attack. 51 percent attack is an attack that happens in blockchain. If that happens, that could be a problem with the whole system. And next is to create a block is very time consuming and imagine creating for the whole population is going to be huge. So that overhead has to be avoided. And finally, the verification of block, which could be critical price to pay. Okay. So uh, these are the three ways which the paper could be expanded or the researchers could, uh, uh, you know, uh, look for an avenue to make a good kind of uh, election process using this uh, blockchain linked to other. So that's all. Uh, I like to thank uh, for the uh, for everything. This is a reference which I made before that, and I like to thank uh, the organization for giving me a chance to uh, deliver this thing to you. 
Thank you. Feel free to ask any questions or suggestions. Thank you.